Good morning. Welcome to the uh, 22nd day of November 2016 and the uh, Good Life Meditation for today. So this is a, a daily activity that I use to uh, uh, remind myself of my objectives and principles, not only for uh, the day, but for life in general. Uh, let's get on to it. They uh, consist of four or five components kind of moving things around so they change a little bit. First of these is the affirmation of human and civil rights. This is nothing more than a reminder that as I develop my principles and make decisions through the course of the day in alignment with my principles and objectives that I do so with a recognition of the uh, rights of individuals and of the subgroups of society to uh, protect their interests in what is it making? In spite of the uh, powers of the, of the larger group, it's nothing more than uh, what I think is uh, probably one of the crowning jewels of civilization. <laughs> Can't seem to get away from that noise. My daughter found this. She left a nickel in here, and I, wherever I put it, it makes noise. I'll put it in my pocket. But uh, kind of like a crown jewel, as I said, uh, in terms of um, we uh, um, <clears throat> society reaches a point where civilization, I should say, reaches a point where it wants to protect the uh, weaker and weaker members of the society and it, and it, it creates laws and uh, codes and guidelines to to do that things like uh, the United States Constitution the bill of uh, corresponding Bill of Rights even 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 things like a United you know the United Nations uh, Declaration of Human Rights uh, uh, Magna Carta no, may even be considered one, uh, maybe even the, the Code of Hammurabi. <laughs> so the uh, so I'll try to do that, and I don't try to make those up myself because I, I'm not I'm not smart enough, and there ain't enough time. So I lean on the efforts of uh, my society, the long you know 240 years of of effort, you know, which was borrowed from a lot of others, to uh, inform me of how, how to proceed. It's going to be a noisy day with the car movement. i got to clean this place up. <clears throat> so now let's move on to the uh, three objectives. <clears throat> the first is the objective of uh, the development, of main development and main maintenance of good, sound life principles. These are the uh, 11 that I'll come to in a moment. And I maintain these by doing this. You know, it, once a day for uh, a set extended period of time, I sit and I think over the principles count them out, explain them to myself, and in the process seek out any weakness or uh, shortcomings. Also uh, keeping an eye open for uh, new bits of nuance on the existing principles that I can discuss, or um, possibly even new principles in, in general. I mean this has grown in the course of probably six months, has grown from six principles to eleven uh, by virtue of this very activity. The next objective is the uh, uh, execution of good emotional reaction to the uh, circumstances of my life and my day, my moments, responding well to whatever happens, no matter how inflammatory, no matter how, uh, um, what's the word, what's the word, in, 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 no matter what the injustice, to, uh, to not meet Injustice with more injustice, but to uh, to respond uh, in a in a reasoned manner. Now, of course, there's circumstances where you can't do that. You know, uh, someone uh, comes at my comes at me with a knife, clearly, clearly with a clear intent to do me harm. I'm going to uh, I'm going to execute the uh, sorry the more reptilian <laughs> all that noise back there. I'm going to execute the more reptilian part of my brain. <clears throat> to uh, engage an immediate emotional, energetic response. Well, maybe I can be more energetic than emotion, but, uh, you know, uh, defend myself, basically. You see what I mean? So there's, there's a time for war, there's a time for, uh, time for uh, uh, diplomacy. <clears throat> and most of the time in this modern world, there's not very often that there's a time for war, so that's why I target more often the, uh, the diplomacy part. Diplomacy, what an interesting word to use. Could I say the uh, the diplomatic management of our emotions? Emotional diplomacy? 
could I change this objective to, I like the way it's described as the objective of cultivating, of, of, of good emotional reactions, but I also like the idea of calling it emotional diplomacy. Well, diplomacy kind of speaks to uh, interactions with others, and this is an interaction within ourselves that, you know, f f facilitates better interactions with others, but I think I'll leave it as it is and just put a pin in that, as they like to say. <laughs> Okay, the next one is the uh, execution of good emotion. Oh, no, no, no. The performance of good actions. Just That's the third objective. It's just to do good things through the day. What are these good things, you may wonder? Well, they're good as defined by the, uh, by the principles. So, doing, living my life, making decisions in accordance with the, uh, with the principles that I'll come to now. So, there are... 11 principles. The first of these is the uh, atomic principle. Let's see, I'm going to struggle a little bit to get these in order because I've got, I've added two new principles over the weekend and I think, and plus a couple of sub principles to these complicated. Let's see if I can uh, list these out in proper order and not miss anything as I've been want to do the last couple of days. I keep on skipping things. Okay, the first one is the atomic principle. Everything in the universe is made of bits and pieces compounds made of molecules, made of atoms, made of subatomic particles, which in turn are just a frozen form of energy. Everything is energy in the end. And uh, reminding myself of that transient, impermeant, impermanent, permanent, permanent, permanent nature uh, is both a, a, a suggestion to action and a reminder of, uh, of transition. It's all going to be over very soon, so if I have something that I want to do, I'd best do it first chance I get, like right now. Two, the uh, principle of nature and the sub-principle of paradigm. Nature simply refers to uh, the fact that everything in the universe has some nature. This includes concepts have a particular nature as well. Maybe the first time I've said that, although I've, I've mentioned it a few times, but it's the first time I've actually categorically described it as 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 a concepts having a character and the way I like to uh, proceed on this is to actually identify something as I'm driving along and nail its character like over there there's a fire hydrant I can see a bright red fire hydrant the uh, the nature of a fire hydrant is to uh, stand at the ready to be uh, firm and steadfast to be sealed to contain uh, water under high pressure with a various uh, orifice, orifice, uh, <laughs> various openings that you can use for different size hoses, to be kind of a mystery to the layman, but a, uh, a very familiar and important uh, tool, instrument, an instrument to uh, f trained firefighters, to be apparently opened, e oh, easily open, opened by, or at least opened by firefighters. Not, I don't know how to open a fire hydrant, nor should I. <laughs> They uh, are. They have the nature of being distributed. There's one here, and there's another one there. I wonder why they're so close. One's yellow, one's red. Well, there's another yellow one. So they have color coding that indicates certain things, and the shape is different on the yellow one. The red one looks more, you know, solid. To uh, they provide a, a, a safety, a security blanket, a safety for uh, the community, and there are a mark of. Uh, of community maturity, in a way. These are some of the uh, characteristics, some of the nature of a, of a fire hydrant. See, so in going through the day, as I try to identify the nature of things around me, I, uh, I then tend to deal with them in a more realistic manner. And this is very useful, for example, I attend a lot of meetings in my job. I'm a, I'm a project manager, uh, I work in the public sector. And it's very helpful when I walk into a meeting to kind of, as I'm walking towards a meeting, I kind of ask myself, what is going to be the nature of this meeting? What is the nature of the people that will be attending? What is the nature of the project at this moment? And this helps me to, to enter the meeting with a clear expectation. In fact, I'm going to use that right away. I've got a, I've got a challenging meeting this morning that I'm going to attend. Um, I'm a little nervous about it. Maybe a, a, little, a little outside my depth because it's a new area for me. Uh, I'm uh, rather ignorant and so part of the nature of going into this meeting and I'm ostensibly leading the meeting is uh, 
my ignorance, despite the fact that I've tried to liberate myself of that meaning to the best of my ability, uh, it remains uh, to a greater or lesser degree, just because I'm so darn busy. So now let's go on to, oh, and so I have a particular nature too, so do you, so does everything. And it's really helpful to look to my own nature as well and remind myself what it is. And my nature is very simple. My nature is to, uh, is to walk alone in wild places and to think and to, per to periodically uh, write those thoughts down or record them on the camera. Okay, the next one is the principle of <clears throat> maturity, of which there are two sub-principles. Wisdom and uh, fortitude. Maturity, as we all know, is the uh, result of experience, mainly the result of witnessed experience. You know, you can have an experience and learn from it, but you can have an experience that will offer you a lesson, and if you don't learn from it, if you don't you know, internalize it, that in some way, then uh, it really doesn't become wisdom. It only becomes a, enters the currency of wisdom when you uh, remember it and are able to then utilize it later in life. And there's two sub-principles there that are helpful to us in developing maturity, and these are, uh, uh, I, I was just talking about wisdom, I meant, I meant maturity when I was saying that, I, I knew I'd stumble. So maturity is, maturity is something that we think of, let me start over, rewind, maturity is, is a quality in a human being, and maybe other animals, that comes with experience usually by virtue of age because it takes time to gain the experience so as the older we get if we're cognizant of our experience and we re remember the good and the bad and the ugly uh, that's happened in our life we become wiser over time so but so I'm really mixing it up let me try one more time back okay the con the prince this I only introduced this two days ago so I haven't had a chance to practice it very much so here's here. The principle is maturity. The sub-principles are wisdom and fortitude. Maturity comes of age through learned experience. Wisdom is what we get is what we gain if, by, by virtue of those experiences that, that, that lends itself to the quality of maturity. Another characteristic that further buttresses the quality of maturity is fortitude, which allows us to persevere despite the fact that things didn't go our way. In fact, the result of both, if, if, if you have one or the other, it both ends up looking like maturity. If you have a very wise person, but they don't have a lot of fortitude, they're gonna probably look pretty mature because they're gonna stay out of bad situations. And as a result, they're gonna be able to keep their cool. They look pretty darn mature because they're going through life, making good decisions, and have, you know, not blowing up because they don't make bad decisions. They have no need to exercise fortitude. On the other hand, if you have fortitude without maturity, you kind of look the same because you're kind of steadfast and res 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 resolute in doing the good and the bad, and that's kind of a mark of maturity. So you see both wisdom and maturity yield yield an end result that wisdom and fortitude, wisdom and fortitude yield an end result that resembles maturity. The powerhouse, the double wham bam, is when you get both wisdom and fortitude together, then you're a formidable force. When you've got, but, and although if you really, really exercise your wisdom well, you won't have many opportunity for your, to use fortitude, except in the cases when life takes you by surprise. Yeah, I think I got that. I stumbled over that a bit, but I think I, I got that through. The next principle is the social principle. Oh, I skipped something. Let me go back, rewind again, back to nature. I was going to say paradigm. Paradigm is a part of part of nature. Par paradigm is more nothing more than the perspective of an individual. But it's not just the way they view things. It's the model and the apparatus by which they go through life. I knew I was going to stumble over this. <laughs> So I'll clear it up as I go forward. At least I'm starting to get it in the right order. So nature and then and then nature, part of that is paradigm. Now let's go fast forward back up to, back up. So we finished uh, uh, maturity. Now we move on to the social principle. The social principle is a uh, principle by which we um, recognize that humans are social animals. We need one another and our best living is living that is toward, is performed in the interest of social good. 
Our best ends are social ends. It's also, uh, social ends are also a, uh, a way towards a very uh, distilled and refined form of virtue. You get a lot of mileage out of social good. Not so much out of individual good. I mean, it is good, but it's not quite, not, not nearly as potent as, uh, it's like an, you know, individual good is a cafe Americano, whereas uh, social good is a, is a cafe, a cafe espresso. So, okay, so I did atomic, nature, maturity, social, temperance. Temperance is the ability to uh, exercise restraint in the consumption of all things. Food, drink, work, play, sex, whatever the case may be, including our emotions. Most important, actually most importantly for me, the controlled consumption of emotions. And with practice, we get really good at this. It's, it's like building muscles up here for the ability to uh, feel something rise up and to control and constrain it. And it's, I'm getting very good at this. If I do this so myself, it's, uh, um, it used to be when I first started doing this, I would kind of, after the fact, realize, oh, wow, yeah, 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 the, my, some event in life ambushed me and my emotions, I ran away with my emotions only after the fact that I realized that was an opportunity for temperance. Now it's more like as it's rising, I go, oh, this is what I was preparing for. And I exercise the temperance right away. And I'm not caught so unawares. And I'm able to execute better fortitude towards that end. See, a lot of this stuff is indeed interrelated. My friend Black Hat made a comment yesterday. I couldn't quite understand the comment, but I think that's what he was referring to, the interrelatedness of things. Hmm. That was five. Six. Okay, hold on. Why do I feel like I'm going to skip some stuff again? Okay, we did atomic, nature, maturity, social, temperance, Best seat in the house? I think so. Best seat in the house is wherever the heck I am right now. It's a it's a principle by which I I don't want I I ask myself to not want to want to be anyone else or will not want to want to be doing anything else or not want to want to, to have a different job or apartment or house or whatever the case may be. It's not wanting to do those things, but being all right with where I am and who I am and what I'm doing in this moment. Uh, okay, I'll leave it at that. The next one, uh, next one is okay. I did uh, that was um, the best seat in the house. That was six. Seven then would be reason, the governing faculty, force by which we uh, come to understand the world. Use looking at the facts, creating arguments to uh, to represent and model those facts, which yield predictions about how the world actually works. If those predictions are true, then we again, we apply a little more confidence to those. Uh, always holding them in tentative, uh, at a tentative arm's length. Because <laughs> uh, new information is always want to, are always likely to, uh, to correct our past mistakes. And if they're wrong, if our predictions are wrong, then we better take a look at what, what we re-examine our, uh, our, our, our information and uh, reconsider our ideas. And of course, always vet these out through argument and consideration and, and, and uh, constructive consultation with others, other human beings. Who else? <laughs> Virtue is the next one, huh? I'm missing stuff again. Virtue is the purpose in life. It is the, uh, it is the way that we, um, I, I, well, I measure virtue, I define virtue as the objective and proven and well-being for uh, the many and the, and the few. Doing things that make things make the world a better place in measurable ways. That doesn't mean that immeasurable things like love aren't important, aren't virtuous. They are, but I'm more concerned with uh, the things that I can actually do that are more tangible. Like uh, being how, how I can become a better informed voter and make good decisions. You know, be a better community member, make good, better decisions for my family to manage our finances and our and our future. To better manage my time so that I'm a better employee. Stay in your lane, dude. Better family member, things like that. Lots of stuff. Now we get onto the path of wildness. Looks like I'm gonna forget one. I don't know what it is yet. 
path of wildness is what I is a trick that I use to unstick myself from a stuck position in life. It comes from my experience in wild places because I always go alone and without maps, without compass, not really knowing where the hell I go, heck I go. And I try to never go to the same place. Try it twice, maybe the same area, but try to always take different routes, different canyons, different ways, climb over different mountains. Um, and as a result, I sometimes get lost and or confused. I don't know what to do. And I I'm stand there with anxiety about should I take this canyon or that canyon? Just like a lot of people that uh, have written to me, uh, particularly young people who say they're anxious about life, and they feel anxiety. And so my trick in the wild is to assess the situation, take in as much information as I can, use my knowledge of past experiences, uh, an idea of what I've got, and then make a gut decision and just go for it. I found that the act of momentum, the act of put, pushing myself into motion, will often yield uh, a positive result, even if I wind up going the wrong way initially, go down the wrong canyon and wind up facing a cliff. Likewise in life, <clears throat> sometimes we can uh, basically spend uh, years and decades uh, uh, in, 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 immobilized by our anxiety, letting our life pass us by, when it would be better to, uh, to spend, spend the appropriate amount of time to gather the information we need to make an informed decision to the best of our ability and push forward ready to fall, ready to make mistakes, ready to die even, for the quest of, uh, of simply uh, of, of living, choosing to live a more, a more deliberate life. And then finally, and that's 10, I'm missing one, 10 is the, is the uh, willful thought management. This is the controlled execution of my mind using my ideas in a more deliberate manner, no, no, using my time, it's not control, it's not willful thought management, it's, excuse me, it's willful time management, using my time better, which relates to my thoughts as well. Not letting this day slide away as just another day, because it is my last day. I have every certainty that I will uh, die tonight. And I better make good use of every moment that I have. Now, what did I miss? Let me go through these again and see if I can flesh it out, what I missed. Atomic principle, principle of nature, the principle of maturity, the social principle, the principle of temperance, vested in the house. It's right around there that I think I'm missing something. Reason, virtue, the path of wildness, willful time management, don't know what it is. But that's not so bad because the last two videos, I missed two principles in each of the last two videos. And this one, I'm only missing one. Uh, oh, well, uh, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere and I'll put it in parentheses, you know, forgotten. <laughs> let's quick, let's go be wrap up. The uh, today's um, thought action. There's four pieces. One, to collect my thoughts before breakfast. Two, to uh, organize or compile my thoughts during lunch. Three, to record my thoughts before dinner. And four, to die before bedtime. That's the thought plan. The action plan. I've got a challenging day. It's a short week. I only work two days. Yoo-hoo! But I've got a challenging day. How do I do this without disclosing too much about my work? I've got to keep it at a very high level. It's very important to me that I not talk about work in a public setting, but I need to talk about the challenges that, I, that I'm facing. I don't know that I can do this. I might have to do this after the camera turns off, just to, uh, just because the information is proprietary. Well, let me just say I've got a challenging day today. And my plan of action is to have all my ducks in a row. My, I can talk about this stuff. It's very important to me that I, 
I use, I work nine hours today. It's very important to me that I get, that I get two breaks and one and a half hour for lunch. It's very important to me that I use the time that I'm actually working in working. I should, I want to stay on task, diligent, and, and on track. I mean, that sounds obvious, but it's easy sometimes to daydream. And uh, I, it's very important, it's always been very important to me that my employer get a good value for uh, their choice to employ me. That I'm not only executing my tasks, but I'm uh, improving my, sharpening myself in the process, learning more and becoming better, able to do a better job, still a better job tomorrow despite the fact that I'm getting older and it's getting harder. I won't go down that, that's a, that's a whole other video. You know, the, the, the compromise between older and, and more experienced and older and older. <laughs> all the things that come with that, all the baggage that comes with that. Of course, there's human dynamics in every situation, of course, in, in so in my work, and I will, uh, do my best to listen with an open open mind and an, an open ear to record uh, wherever necessary ways to improve we could try to lay out what I need to do so I can be a, a good uh, project manager executing a very deliberate process I think I can talk about that my process you know, my process, which is with every project, is to uh, to identify what the project is, to identify the objectives of the project, what is within and outside of scope, to determine what the uh, what whatever what risks may be involved. This is all the initial assessment. To lay out a, a rough, rough rough level idea of the objectives and milestones for the project. And when possible, begin to uh, add in the team members, identify who the team members are, and then to develop a plan of action. You know, it should be a project charter or a project plan, and we'll vote both if I have time, if I'm allowed time. And then to get the uh, team to sign off on that. That's our battle plan. And we don't deviate from that without a change order. We identify when changes occur. That keeps us on track. We've really got to do that. Really gotta, we really gotta stay on track with that because it's easy to uh, get into guerrilla warfare on mode. Not, not here, but in any, any organization, that's the case. And then once I have my schedule, to begin executing that schedule. Keeping the uh, assigned team members on their on track. And to, uh, to move the project along according to the timeline and to, to have, have contingency plans, uh, to develop contingency plans when issues come up that impact that uh, our our ability to, to execute of course and identify what all the where all the dependencies are so we can identify those as well and then do our uh, bring the project to a successful conclusion wrap it up I document the wrap up and move on to the next job all the while maintaining a good sense of uh, of my time management communicating that to my management so that they can uh, make sure they're allocating appropriate amount of time for me to do the job successfully I like that. I think I can I can lay that out every time because that's important. Anything else? Oh, when I'm done, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to this week. It's Thanksgiving week. I'm gonna be done tonight. Get home. Uh, hang out with the family. Do my swim. I'm really excited about this weekend. And uh, we're gonna go out and see my take take my daughter tomorrow to the dentist. And we're gonna go out and see uh, my mom for Thanksgiving. Uh, Emily's going to do this all night, starting at midnight, shopping to think for black, black, oh, here we go, let me get all this truck's way, for Black Friday, and uh, he wants to get over, I think that's enough, I think, I, I think I'll wrap this up, just under, just under 30 minutes, and I, I still don't know what that principle was, but, oh wow, well, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> I hope you, hope you have a, a very, very wonderful day, and a very good life. Take care, everybody. If anybody's there. Bye-bye. <laughs>